Hello and welcome to this month's episode of My CyberWide, the series where we speak to people from around the world about the great work they're doing to keep us safe in cybersecurity. Today's guests are both from the Cyber Peace Institute. The Cyber Peace Institute, or CPI, works to safeguard the integrity of the online ecosystem that we all rely on by directing assistance to vulnerable victims of large-scale cyber attacks and promoting greater accountability when those attacks violate international expectation and laws. And with us today are the CEO of CPI, Stefan, and I'm not going to say your last name because I'll, I'll just sound like an idiot and say it incorrectly. So welcome, Stefan. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, last name is Dugin. It's quite difficult to say when uh, when you're not native with that incredible accent that us French have with uh, specific English. So thank you for having us. You're very kind to, to let me off the hook. On that. And also with us is Adrian, and Adrian is the Chief Operating Officer of CPI. Welcome, Adrian. Thanks a lot, Diana. Uh, yeah, and family name is uh, OG, which is also slightly difficult to pronounce, but OG works fine too. So thank OG. you for the invitation. Glad to be here. The original. So let's get started. As you know, there are four questions, and the first question is, who are you? So let's get started. Stefan, would you kick us off? Who, who is Stefan? Yeah, thank you for this one. I, I can build on the previous one. It's like I'm French, as you can hear. So let's uh, let's be sure that everyone uh, <laughs> is clear about that. Yeah, um, <laughs> um, well, my, uh, yeah, I've been in law enforcement since I'm 19 years old. So I guess it's quite a definition of uh, who am I, especially because we are going to talk about uh, about work afterwards. So at the same time, I've also been writing since I'm almost the same age. So uh, writing and uh, mostly plays or scripts and uh, producing and also acting, in fact. So also in a professional matter. And uh, who am I? I'm also interested in cyber for very, very long. Uh, I enrolled, in fact, one of the first courses when cyber was something in secondary school uh, back in the days. And I'm not that young anymore, I'm telling you. So it was really back in the days. And uh, so who am I? It would be like a, um, a mix of a, a cop, a writer, and a geek. I'm not sure it's the right mix, but that's the mix. And no out of his comfort zone, because since December last year, I'm the chief executive officer of the Cyber Peace Institute. So it's, it's kind of a stretch, but, and are you, but you're still acting and writing in addition to, to running the, the Institute? Uh, yeah, the writing is, uh, yeah. is suffering from the activities of setting up and uh, leading an institute all in one. So, yeah, there's a complaint from the writer to the CEO, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and how about you? Who, who is Adrian? So Adrian is a surprise first and thank you for the opportunity. I didn't know Stefan was an actor, but now I understand well how he convinces everyone to follow him on these crazy journeys at work. <laughs> uh, so um, I'm, I'm not an actor, but um, I'm, uh, so I'm Adrian half uh, French as well, as you can probably tell, um, and half Brazilian. Um, so I'm kind of somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, I'm, um, I've been in cybersecurity for a while uh, as well. Uh, background is in uh, engineering and telecommunications, um, but that doesn't just define me. I'm also a dad. I'm also a, a an outdoors lover. Um, I love sports. I have two kids. So right now we're in Geneva, which is a great region uh, to go out in summer and in winter. Um, I'm also an avid learner, so I've been studying um, for you know, almost forever. And right now I'm wrapping up an MBA, which has been really draining from an energy perspective, but very much looking forward to close that chapter and go back in the woods uh, with the kids. Yeah, yeah I understand. You both have a lot on your plate. So what do you do at the at the Cyber Peace Institute, Adrian? What, what, is it, what does the COO do? Right, so as Chief uh, Operating Officer, one of my main responsibilities is um, at the Cyber Peace Institute to provide assistance to vulnerable populations. So I run a small team um, that looks at uh, providing all sorts of cybersecurity services to uh, populations that cannot protect themselves against cyber attacks. Uh, I guess Stefan will explain a little bit more the entire mission of the Institute and how assistance fits into that mission. But I just guess just want to say that I'm I'm really privileged to be in that position because it's a fantastic mission. I get to help um, people that really need it. So I get to feel that I make a difference 
which is perhaps the main reason why I joined cybersecurity in the first place. So for me, it's a, it's a real um, accomplishment to be working together with Stefan and the rest of a huge team. We have a growing team, by the way, uh, filled with amazing talent from all over the world. And uh, it's, you know, really, a, um, um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a really good mission. The Institute is fairly new, so we are also building a lot of things which appeals to that side of me that likes to explore, likes to create new things, to cover new ground. So right now we're in a very dynamic phase, which uh, is something I really, really enjoy. So perhaps, Stefan, you want to complement that and explain a bit more about the Institute? Yeah, please. Yeah, thank you, Adrian. And the, uh, something that you mentioned in the, in the middle of it, which may be the most important, is what uh, Adrian is busy with, what I'm busy with every day, is uh, interacting with a amazing team, clearly. It's, uh, I mean, this whole setup of the Institute, I will explain a bit. Uh, the journey is also about uh, meeting uh, new colleagues uh, and feeling this uh, common drive in order to achieve this uh, quite ambitious agenda of uh, in um, implementing cyber peace in, uh, in the cyberspace. So um, what is it that we do? Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, let's put that in a simple sentence. Our mission is to achieve peace in the cyberspace. So yes, we are quite busy uh, and uh, yeah, maybe dreaming in fact, but still. Um, coming from an issue that is not new, I mean, you have uh, these uh, interviews with a lot of um, people that are very versed in the cyber matters. So we all know what is the, uh, the issues at M, digitization of society, the uh, complexity of uh, change of behavior, exponential growth of technology, this disruption, this convergence that are creating opportunities, at the same time changing the risk landscape. And also the fact that uh, a lot of response to these opportunities and risk have in most of the cases been thought from the, from the lens of uh, being good for the markets or being good for geopolitics. So we try to look at this from a different lens and we say, okay, what's the space for human beings in this whole equation? And who is really looking into the societal impact of evolution of the cyberspace, of usage in cyberspace? And when it comes to threats to this usage or to attacks, etc., what can we do uh, in order to be sure that you and I, everyone, are enjoying uh, uh, yeah, connected the digital space that is uh, at peace? So the... Um, you heard that already then, that our approach is a bit different than what you would see in the normal cybersecurity realm, and that's why we're not a cybersecurity uh, per se entity. Really, we focus on the on the human side of what is happening and not like using buzzword, we're human-centric, human are very nice, etc. This is really about the, the, the tactic, is to look into when something is happening in cyberspace, what is the societal impact? What is the impact on human security, on human dignity, on human equity? And then what can we do about it? Because we could just, you know, document and explain, but this is this is a do organization. So, and our tactic is to think if actors, uh, everyone in the cyberspace uh, have responsibilities and very different responsibilities, uh, we see our role as enforcing accountability to all these responsibilities. So um, in a nutshell, the day in the Institute is a bit mixed now because we are building it up. So there's a lot of uh, recruiting, inducting, uh, negotiating to have uh, computers and space. I mean, this all nice stuff when you set up something like a startup in COVID-19 time, and that's uh, yeah, funny to say the least. And uh, being already operational, and Adrian is leading, for example, one of the first operational projects, uh, which is Cyber for Healthcare. And you put that into an overall bubble, which is we uh, we assist, we investigate, we analyze, and we report, having at the focus uh, what is happening to human communities. Yeah, and and, yeah, and congratulations again on the, the the launch of Cyber for Healthcare and for launching it so quickly in response to the needs after COVID. That was quite a feat. As you were standing up the institute, you were also standing up that program. So, Stefan, why? Why do you do it? You're, you're acting, you're writing, you're doing a lot of other things in your life. Why did you say, I and mean, what gets you up in the morning? Why did you get very excited to become the CEO of this institute? Um, yeah, if I take a step back, I've always been into public service. I mean, I really have the, at my core, since I was saying 19 years old as a civil servant, I really deeply believe that there's some, some activity that needs to be provided for free and at the best of your capacity to the most vulnerable. So that's really, I believe in this. 
And um, I see that role as a CEO inside the Business Institute in the same uh, in the same realm because it's not okay. It's not financed by the states, and it will not. But the whole idea is to service the vulnerable populations. Um, what is driving me? What what is the change that I would like to achieve? Is uh, I don't know if we aim low, at least that our children uh, have a uh, internet that is as bad as the one that we have. That would be already great. Uh, but if we am I, it's really that uh, everyone will enjoy uh, security, will enjoy uh, yeah dignity, equity, as was mentioning before, uh, across the internet. Because the um, um, it goes back to what we were, we were touching upon a bit before, uh, attracting these talents and working with this team now that are coming from very diverse background, very diverse expertise. Some are coming from cyber, some outside of cyber. We all join each other because we all believe that there's something to be done and to be done beyond the usual suspects of cyber. So that, that drives me. Is uh, I've done that for years uh, in the, under the, the lens of law enforcement. There's a lot that we can do from that lens. I also saw what industry can do, what states can do, what other can do. But here it's about uh, how can we all do together in order really to, to make change happen? Uh, because it feels that for the past uh, decade and more, we are talking a lot about this change, but we are not seeing uh, the situation quite improving. So that's the motivation. And, and changing it from the people and the hearts and the minds. Yeah, that's, that's agreed. I think that a lot of times in technology, we go to a technology solution, but this is this is humans, so it's great that you're you're addressing that aspect. Adrian, what's your why? Why did you decide to join the institute, and and what gets you excited every day when you come to work? Yeah, I, I think I'll build on what Stefan was just saying. I mean, the reason I I joined the institute was because it felt to me that it was pro proposing a, a paradigm shift in how we were doing cybersecurity up until now. And in, you know, in my career, I started working for the private sector, then I joined the government for a few years, I worked for the European Union. So I, I also saw how we were trying to improve cybersecurity from the public service uh, side. And I, I was last at the World Economic Forum, where I got to work with large corporations around the world. I also saw how they were implementing that. And, and I, you know, I, I learned so much in every experience that I've had, but also saw the limitations of trying to do cybersecurity in the confines of one country one region, one corporation, and the Cyber Peace Institute being a global organization with the mandate that it has, but at the same time, the very down-to-earth business model. It's not, we're not trying to um, disrupt the entire universe at once. We, we come with a very targeted approach, and that felt to me like a very realistic mission, despite the ambition. So it, it, it felt, you know, good that you know, these ideas were put together. Uh, it felt good that this team was being put together. So that's, you know, those were the main reasons why I joined the Institute. And I guess the reasons why I joined cyber in the first place is because it really feels like a new, you know, a new land to explore. And I, I like to cover grounds in the Alps, the same way I like to cover new ground uh, in cyberspace. But in doing so, I like to make sure that others can come after me and enjoy it, right? Uh, the saying that you go out hiking and try to make sure that you don't leave your litter and things like that. Um, in cyberspace, I'd like to make sure that my kids have, as Stefan was saying, as bad a space as, as we've had, or perhaps, you know, maybe a bit hope, hope, more hopeful, a little bit better. And I think that the way in which we can achieve a better cyberspace is by coming up with those disruptive ideas that are gonna, that are gonna drive profound change and show the world that actually there are so, much, so many opportunities in cyberspace that we can reap it's probably better to think about it positively rather than negatively. It's always covered in the press as, you know, uh, uh, something bad where evil happens, where you deal drugs and, and cybercrime and all of that. But actually, you know, I've had a fantastic career in cybersecurity, Stefan too, I guess, and, and you too. Uh, we are happy thanks to cyber cyberspace. So um, I think there's a lot of good things that are happening there that are not being talked about enough. And you know, just one thing, like every day I get to solve a different challenge. And not all of it is technical. A lot of it has to do with humans. How do we get the message across? How do we convince this country? How do we convince these people? So I just, yeah, I just find it a fascinating, fascinating space to, to walk in. I, I, I finished my career in cyber 100%. I, I completely agree. I mean, and that's actually what that's that was what, what spurred this entire series was that I was reading yet one more headline talking all about the attacker. And I mm. thought, yeah, but what about all of us <laughs> that are doing great good work like you're doing? So that's that's why 
that's why my cyber why exists. So thank you. Um, thank you so much for the work you do. It's fantastic. And as you know, I'm a huge fan of the, the Institute. Any thoughts about how people can get involved or get more information? I will have the link in the, the post that accompanies this video, but anything else that you'd like to say to the audience about what they can do and how they can get involved? Yeah, the, um, I'll build on what Adrian was saying before. It's uh, how, how do you see cyberspace? You, all of us. So um, that's now very personal uh, view about this. It's for me, it's a space where we have the unique opportunity to, while connecting to each other anywhere, we can also create and access knowledge instantly. For me, that's the core of everything else. The rest is services, whatever you want to call it, but that's the core. This, that's, that's the way I see it. The, and it goes to the to to how I would uh, I would argue that uh, anyone can have a role in order to help this common ventures of achieving cyber peace. It could be on a very like daily activity level that um, anyone is more thoughtful when they um, receive an email before forwarding it or downloading an attachment or forwarding this video that they know it's fake to someone else and that maybe there's a malware inside it's going to infect the system. Something is like, uh, what is your own responsibility as a user of the cyberspace? Because it provides a lot, but in order for it to stay good and to be uh, yeah, way better than what we have now to, to, to safeguard this, there's need to be individual responsibility. So we, and, and this goes from helping and us putting our energy to provide um, uh, tools, knowledge, time to uh, empower empower the users um, because the worst it would have uh, users of cyberspace that would be just cost, cu customers customers of services of black boxes now the whole idea is for people to be you know creator of knowledge creator of this uh, of this um, understanding of what it is and being an active part of this uh, of this network um, on the other end of the spectrum there's also higher responsibility because the, the stakes are different but uh, it's also to uh, it's a call towards the state it's a call towards industry it's a call towards civil society with their specific responsibilities we did that with state with the call for government when it comes to uh, not attack of course but also protect the healthcare but uh, can have similar calls to industry to uh, to think very um, thoroughly and to invest resources into uh, data protection, into security by design, and into uh, and having the right um, approach when driving innovation in cyberspace to be sure that uh, it's uh, also having in mind the interests of the of the people that are that are active in this space. And so so the call is there. It's really to um, what we can offer is this platform to document uh, what is happening in the cyberspace to uh, to the one that are the worst of this asymmetry. You have incredible sophistication uh, when it comes to uh, to attack, disruption, etc., and very little capacity to just understand what's happening and even saying about defending yourself. So we want to provide this platform where this can get an echo, this can get a voice about what is happening to people and what they want, and then also uh, putting evidence behind this, meaning that uh, it would it, it would be a, it would be a platform where you can see the history of the cyberspace also from that point of view, the point of view of what happened to communities and then making sure that because that point of view is going to be public, shared and uh, improved over time, then industry, states, you and I, civil society, etc. We know, OK, now I understand what's happening and I know what's my role and I have a part, I have a part to play there. So that would be my uh, my uh, my call to um, to make sure that actors live up their responsibilities and we'll have a lot of uh, programs and campaigns to, uh, to support. And cyber peace starts with the individual. Yeah, that's that's great. Adrian, any anything else you'd like to add in terms of a call to action? Um, yeah, I mean that resonates a lot with me. You know, since I joined the institute, I've been trying to hold my family members accountable for what they say, and uh, they they're not very happy with me at the moment. But it's a work in progress. But you know, when my mom, for instance, shares something on WhatsApp, I'm like, are you sure what you're sharing? Like, have you checked the source? Are you, are you sure this is legitimate information? If not, can you make sure you don't share that, you know, too widely? Because you have an impact, like everyone has an impact. And since I'm at the Institute, I'm starting to see all this impact materializing everywhere around me. 
And, you know, it, it, sometimes it can get overwhelming and given the amount of misinformation that goes around. But uh, um, certainly I realize the potential that every single individual can have in the world in, in, in their little community, right? So um, I'm very in tune with that. Um, one thing that I, I think it's not really a call for action, it's more a call for fun, uh, which will lead to a call for action. I was very lucky when I started my career in cybersecurity, I was uh, tasked to plan um, crisis exercises, cyber crisis exercises for the French government. And I don't think that it gets more fun than that because you get to create chaos, uh, you get paid for it, and you don't destroy anything and nobody puts you in jail. Um, but you have a lot of fun and it, it really crystallizes all the issues that you can see in cybersecurity for organizations, for countries, for people at individual level and gets you to test all of these things out in a really entertaining way and it really hooks you to cybersecurity. So my message out there is if you have the opportunity to plan an exercise, to participate in an exercise, whether it's a hackathon, it's an exercise in your organization, at work with an association, whatever, even a tabletop, there exists some games that you can play, board games, like do that. And you see like cybersecurity is a lot of, is actually a lot of fun. It can be really interesting and you get to do things that really matter and that can change, you know, sort of space for generations to come. So yeah, I guess that's my goal. Yeah. That is, that's actually, that's great advice because yeah, both of you, you're really resonating on that, that it, it starts with the individual, but completely agree also that sometimes just getting involved and it's amazing. I've, I've run some tabletop exercises and when you start hearing how the CEO or the CFO is, is hearing and responding, it's, it, you really do get a whole different view when, it, when people are acting on um, the decisions, you know, they're taking it as though it's real rather than just sort of like, it's like, eh, cyber something out there. So thank you both again, really for all the work you do at CPI for being here and sharing um, your insights and your CyberWise with the CyberWise audience. And thank you very much for those that are watching. We're really glad you're here and please let us know if you have guests you'd like to see on the next My CyberWise. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.